today I will be showing a, a bit of integration between hired and MD tools. I have made this diagram. My challenge today is uh, draw design the course in the 40 minutes time frame. So this is what uh, we are going to design this on the on my right screen. So that I will be able to find the components. Frequently, when I design a block, I get a schematic made on paper or with other software. So always I redraw the diagram with, with Hadoker because the advantage is incredible in terms of information that I can get out of the diagram. And so today I try to uh, pass this information and show you how quickly I can draw a diagram and how quickly I can deliver a manifold assembly from a Hadoker diagram. So basically my diagram is made uh, of uh, some components. I have a bill of material. So I will just go in HydroCAD search from fluid fiber tools and uh, I'm going to look for the components I need. So in this case, the need was uh, airlift valve sun hydraulics RDDA. And I find directly the symbol I need. So this relief valve will be uh, relieving the, the pressure from the P port, I need to flip it vertically and I will make my P line going this way. I will make the tank line going this way and connect uh, my relief valve. Uh, then we have a couple of counterbalance valves uh, which are uh, winner in this case, uh, winner uh, uh, CB11A. And uh, they are the three zero item. If we need more information, we can open a data sheet directly, and this will open a data sheet for the component. And we can view. So three zero is a ten to one pilot ratio. Double click, and I place my component here. I need to flip because the cylinder port is uh, up, so I will flip it uh, vertically. And also, let me flip it uh, horizontally. And let me place another one here and quickly flip it uh, vertically and uh, that's it. So I have my two dual um, counterbalance valve. Uh, then I have two NG6 uh, position. And uh, in this case, I'm using uh, Bosch Rexroth uh, uh, 4WE6J, uh, but to end up with the same code, if you, for instance, if you need a replacement for a Parker D1 VW004, you search for the component and you can uh, show linked item to that same symbol and it will show a list of uh, available items. So in my case, I'm using a Rexro, so I will take my 4W6J and double click and place my symbol. I need another one of them, so copy. And the same one is a copy here. Uh, actually, I need a pressure reducing valve, NG6 sandwich mounted. And uh, again, I know the molecule, so it's easy. ZDR6. And we have, uh, I need to reduce the P line, double click and place my symbol here. Uh, when you have a sandwich uh, mounted items, you can use in AutoCAD the stack command to quickly uh, stack symbols up or down. So now they will behave uh, like a, a unique item, although they are split in the, in the past. Uh, while using some AutoCAD commands, I can quickly extend my connection line. Now let me start making connection lines. So the P line is going uh, here and also here. Then I have a tank line. Another one. And uh, I will connect uh, my working line. Pilot lines. And uh, these are going to the cylinder ports. Uh, everything here, well, I have other two ports. Let's let's put them on the right side. 
everything here belongs to a manifold so let me put an envelope here and uh, the envelope is uh, creating external port symbol so this is my t port and just uh, of course i could type in flow rate pressure but uh, i have the diagram that's a 10 sa port uh, this one is a p port and that's uh, always a 10 sa port to make it faster i copy this side to the other sizes so they all become 10 sa to do it quickly double click and type in p1 and double click and type uh, t1 and uh, that's my a2 port my b2 port my a1 my b1 that's a dash eight size so eight and again copy from a1 to my So my diagram looks almost complete. Just to pay attention to cosmetic, I just bring my envelope line here. Uh, the item number, I want to move somewhere here. Um, I like to make the diagram as small as possible, so I will try to make it uh, better overall looking. So let me just stretch this line and put the pilot inside here. And we can use some smart AutoCAD commands like the stretch, so we can uh, reduce this. And again here. Also on that side. With a bit of uh, training, really, you can be very, very fast with uh, making diagrams. So my diagram is, uh, is well made. Actually, uh, there was an orifice plug. So today I want also to to show how to design a block with orifice plug. It's in the P line. So let me go to the symbol and uh, it's under flow control orifice. I place my symbol uh, in the drawing, really. Uh, let me move on top of the connection line. The connection line will break into uh, two pieces. I need to specify symbol port for my orifice. So uh, that's two to one. This has to do with the MD2's information. So I need to type uh, uh, port two and port one. Edit symbol, edit symbol port allows you to uh, read the information for the ports in the symbol and uh, define the port name. If you need to change the size of the orifice, select it. And uh, you can just type in, uh, if you want to display the diameter symbol, percent, percent, C is the shortcut for the uh, diameter symbol, and that's it. Uh, since this is the only component that comes from my library, I need to specify the cavity. So that's an M6 uh, by one cavity. So I just type in my cavity name. It will match a name in my MD2s library. All the other components come from uh, uh, Fluid Power Tools, and they already, already have the cavity name. So as you can see here, 11.8-3 or T10-A and, uh, and so on. Now I want to design my block, uh, but before doing that, I will just link something else because I have a few 3D models. So you may know that uh, if you uh, link all the information in the diagram, then you can save a uh, huge time in the design assembly. So in this case, I want to take a 3D model that is already loaded in my library and uh, if you want to know how to load the 3d models to the hydro library we already made a webinar otherwise feel free to ask and we'll set up another webinar uh, in the coming uh, months so we have a regular meeting and we can fine tune uh, according to to your needs so this is the cb11a uh, 3d model i take it also for the other component cb11a i take also the rdda sunhydraulics I use a SOLIDWORKS because today my demo will be concentrated on uh, MD2's 975 for SOLIDWORKS. 
Otherwise, if you have inventory, you just link uh, IPT files or AIM files. Uh, the other trading models I will link directly in the assembly. So I'm ready to start my design. I will run two commands now. The first is net. So net command will work on the uh, envelope and will allow me to verify the connection I have made. And you can name these nets. So I usually like to rename nets because they help me when doing the design. So for me, this is B2, this is A2, B1, A1, and the other I leave as they are. But you could rename all these nets, P, T, and so on. Now that I have verified that my connection are doing good, I will just export to MD Tools my uh, drawing. Okay. And I have this dialog that shows me all the components that I'm going to export to MD Tools. When I select an item, uh, as you can see, it will show me the 3D model linked uh, port information. So which net belongs to each port for the cavity and cavity information. Also the engraving. So 2.1 will be the engraving for the component in my in my manifold. Uh, you could specify preferred face. I'm not doing that. I will just go straight to uh, MD Tools. So you generate an XML file that uh, we can uh, load, and that's our uh, uh, webinar 975. And that's our file, XML file that we use to uh, uh, to design our block. So now we are ready to start our uh, our project. Let me go to SolidWorks and start a new part. In my um, environment, uh, I quickly go to the options. So I want to make sure that uh, I'm using the correct library and uh, that uh, the construction ports needed for my design are expander. So if you want to change the construction port, you just select all, delete, and load from your library the construction port that you need. So in my case, they are expander. I want all the sizes, close and apply. So in my design now, I'm going to use expander plugs. I'm going to create my block, let's say 200 millimeter by 100 by 100. And I'm going to load the schematic. Webinar 965. So now uh, the schematic is being loaded and MD tools will give me warning if any information is not correct in terms of cavity. So I could have a misspelled a cavity. So if I type here a cavity that is not correct, like I, I write my name here, if there is no cavity in MD tools library, you will get a warning and uh, in MD tools um, dialog. On the left uh, in MD tools, uh, we have uh, the list of all the components that we need for our design. This panel is divided into cavities and nets. So we are able to navigate through cavities and nets. All the diagram is here. All the information for the diagram is here and I don't need to look back again to the diagram to design this block. I'll just take my component 3.1, insert and place it here, rotate. And let me define a precise position, let's say 50 by 30. Okay, this is my first cavity. As you see, I already have a colored uh, ports for my cavity, red, uh, light blue, and so on. You can control cavity color in MD tools by the settings that you have in the MD tool options, cavity color net. So in my settings, I have a P net red, a T net light blue. That's why I rename in the hydro diagram the net like P and T. So it's very easy for me to understand that this is the net I need. And uh, I place the other cavity here and rotate it. And uh, with reference to this cavity, I position at uh, 60, zero. Those are my two main footprint. Um, if you don't like the, the position of your cavity, you can just use the move multiple and you can just uh, click this. They will move by increment of five millimeters. 
or you can just stretch a face. And this will just uh, uh, change the size of the block. Let me, I will need some material. Let's make it 180. And now I can start designing by net. And uh, I can see my pinet, uh, which is made of a P port, which I want to place somewhere here at uh, 70, 60. Looks good. And of course, P1 will be opposite pace. Change the reference with respect to this cavity at zero, zero. And now we see color and we need to connect them. So let me stretch this drill and make it uh, 92. So the block was 180, so 92 is okay. And I stretch this by the same, 92. They will overlap just by 4 mm. Now I want to connect my drill my p line and let me make a, an inclined drill so stretch this drill with inclination going to here uh, you can change the angle so you can say simple angle or uh, dual inclination and you can change the alpha and beta let's make it 10 degrees and let's make it 60 millimeter deep so we have made our first connection. The other NG6 is not connected directly because if you remember in the diagram, there was an orifice. So this, uh, um, this color net, net nine, has an orifice. So we want to put the orifice inside this drill. The orifice is uh, an M6, so we can view it here, and that's an M6. So we need a larger drill to accommodate that orifice. So we select this drill, we make it uh, seven by two millimeter deep, that's enough. And we just double click on the orifice and place it inside and click OK. This will be our orifice plug just down uh, our um, NG6 P port. Now red with red, we want to connect. We don't want to make an inclined connection here. We just make a construction port. Construction port from this to this, M6, yeah, that, that, that's okay. And we place our drill. Now we go on with our design. There was a relief valve, let's find it. Nets, P, and this is our relief valve. Item one, insert here and connect here in the center. And we realized that we may use this drill uh, instead of the plug. So let's put a reference to this cavity and make it in the center. So now we realize we don't need any more that, uh, that plug, so let's remove it. Yes. And we want to make our tank lines. So on the T line, we take our T port and connect. We just play with color. We are building the diagram in MD2s, just playing with our colors. And this is going to be here. Uh, these drills are very, very large uh, for the rated flow that we need. So we may reduce them, stretch. Let's make it then at 15 millimeter. And now we can use the match properties to copy the same drill between different operations in the block. We want to copy just the drill diameter. Okay. This command is very powerful. It allows you to really apply the same diameter. So it will save tooling and uh, tool change in the manifold block. And also your design will look much, much better. Let's connect the tank lines, export tank with tank, continue on front face. And we do again the same operation, construction port on this face. Now we start with our uh, 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 A and B port. So we go by net. And as you see, we have different colors here, uh, B2, A2. So A2 is directly here, so we take it 
and uh, connect in the center. Let's leave it here. Let's make it 115. We don't need such a large drill. So let's make it a 10 millimeter and we place it here. I see that uh, the B2 will go down here. So let me move the engraving one. So to move engraving, you edit engraving, edit, engraving one, edit, and you can change new location. It will be maybe on the top right. Okay. Let's go to the B2, insert here and connect in the center moving down and uh, 115 by 85 by 80. I see there is a problem here. Let's move uh, all the cavities uh, up. Move multiple, tank, tank, plug, plug, relief, one and two. That means 10 millimeters up. A2, we want to move engraving A2, edit, A2, and we change the location. We also want to move our uh, ports, P ports, so we can align one and two with the relief valve. I didn't select the other one, we can align them and that's that's it. As you see here, these drills are very close to each other. Actually, here we have also a problem. We have an intersection, which I don't like at all. These issues are identified by MD2's connection check. So when we run a connection check, uh, we can highlight all the problems in our design. And uh, in this case, there is a wrong connection, which is exactly the one that we, we found. So I don't want to move the P port. I want to incline slightly this drill by, let's say, 10 degrees by 270. Too much, let's make it less. Seven degrees, it's okay. But still, that's not, uh, um, that there could be a wall thickness issue here. So we can check wall thickness uh, between selected cavity, between these two, and start and realize there is only 0 0.9 millimeter here. So we want to move this cavity slightly to the right. Move, let's move by one, two, three, and four. So now the distance becomes 4.9 and that's safe enough for us. We can do something more. That's not a problem here. Let's make it uh, 130. So then at the end of our machining drawing will look very good. This drill is long, so let's uh, reduce it, stretch, and let's make it uh, 55. And we can go on with our design. As you see here, we have also this drill, which can be uh, reduced, connect. And we do again a connection. Now let's put our counterbalance valves in the block. So we want all the A ports to be on the front face. So we will put the counterbalance valve behind and uh, let's find them 2.1 and 2.2. So let's place one valve uh, here. Let's make it 20 and 20. And we put the other valve. Uh, 2.2, we put it uh, in between. Reference to this cavity, let's make it uh, 65, zero, so aligned. Um, there may be some wall thickness issue, so let's move uh, multiple, one and two, move uh, down by five mm. There may be some issues of wall thickness, which we can measure actually, but uh, we just view and uh, move multiple. We move this to on the Y direction, just by 5 mm. 
Now let's start making our uh, our connection. So as you see, I may find it to swap these cavities. So you can use the swap two cavities. So swap means we just uh, exchange a position two cavities. I want to do that because this uh, blue is directly on this face, so it's very easy to connect. And now I just make a construction port here uh, with this cavity on this face. And I have a connected one. Uh, the other pilot line may come from the opposite face. So I will make a construction port on port three. I don't need a large diameter. I take just an M307 on this face. And now I will connect them. Uh, export on this face. And the reference will be this at zero. So I have made one connection. I need to connect the uh, pink one. I may need to sync this cavity so I can do edit. This one I want to sync by a lot, let's say 28 millimeters. I want to see if I can find a room for connecting somewhere here. That's a bit tricky. Let's move it. Move on the X direction. I may need a construction port here and position the here. Okay. And then by doing that, I should be able to make a connection. I may need to sink a bit more that cavity, but usually with the sun cavity that's doable. Uh, let's make it 32. And now I can make a construction plug between this on the bottom face. I need a six millimeter diameter and I put it on the Y direction. Looks good. We need to check the wall thickness here. So we can do a wall thickness check around this drill. Let's say that our safety margin is 4 mm and we start and we see that we have a 2.7 millimeter. That's tough, not good, not good enough. So we just do a small change in our, uh, in our design. So we line slightly the drill. So let's use the same drill match properties. This one with this, we copy alpha and beta. So now the drill will take the same geometry. And uh, we stretch this drill to make the intersection. As you see, I am doing something uh, not very good because I am connecting wrong colors, but uh, we can easily do a change. So we can do a move multiple, one and two. And uh, we can move on the Z direction by two steps. Now we may decide that the P line, instead of inclined, we make it straight. So we change and make it zero and add a construction plug. and connect. And this is not good. We can move it on X direction. Okay. And the same here, we have a wrong connection. So we move this uh, connection to the left. Always pay attention where the origin is located when you move a cavity. So that's plus X. So that's why I'm clicking plus X or minus X. Let's make it 67. Looks good. This may be too inclined. So let's reduce a bit the drill. Let's make it five degrees. That should be enough. 
uh, we made our connection. We need to connect the pilot line for this uh, this big connection. Uh, so let's find it. Well, let's put the, in the meantime the ports. A1 insert here and put uh, with reference to this cavity at zero zero in the center. Let's keep it 13 millimeter diameter. And sorry, I didn't type in properly, 13 by 25. That should be enough. And uh, we see that these are very close to each other, so we can move slightly this port to the right. I want to keep the center to center uh, connection. A1, we take uh, B1 and position here and position with reference to this cavity at zero, zero. And like I did previously, I want to match properties, this drill with this one, copying drill diameter and depth. That's easier. Now I need to connect uh, the pilot line. There is a room here, construction port here, and place it uh, here in the center. Let's move it up. Okay. And now we have some room here. We may need to move down the P port. Let's try. And B60, that's a pilot line. We put it here and we move down. That should be good. Good, I don't like this P-port, really it's in a position only this one, so I could save a lot of material in my block. So let's move it, move it on this position. And maybe we connect on the side, if we find a place to connect. But yes, there is a lot of room. We can stretch it, make it zero, and we can add a construction port on this face. And let's stretch it and make it, uh, well, we can stretch up to this plug, so that's easier. Let's remove material. Let me save my block. Block. And let me remove, uh, let's say, 20 millimeter, 80. This operation will take a slightly longer than what you find in Inventor uh, because of the different uh, technique that uh, are used by the two software, by the two MD tools. And um, so, but this, this commands just uh, adding material, removing material are very powerful. So now I, the change was not involving too many cavities, but there may be delays uh, in, uh, according to where you, uh, you remove material. Now let's check our schematic. If we made something wrong, there is a problem. So this drill is touching, uh, I'm zooming very closely. So it is touching a gray area. I didn't want to. Well, actually here the easiest solution is just sink by an extra mm. So instead of moving the cavity, let me just sink a bit more, 33. And that will solve the problem. So again, this is the most important check you can do in a block, connection check. You can start, and this will give you the list of a poor connection or a bad connection, a wrong connection. So this is important. When this is empty, then you can trust that the, the block that you have designed is consistent with the net information that you have applied to the, to the components. Uh, you can then, uh, uh, standardize, I, I mean, in this case, match properties used here across these two drills. You can use the same tool, drill diameter. So then uh, you know that in this phase there will be less tool change when you do this operation. The other uh, important command is the wall thickness check. When you design, I recommend you do some wall thickness check so that you don't have too many uh, issues at the end. 
but at the end it's always better to do a wall thickness check and that will find that will possibly find some issues so here as you see uh, this they have a small problem because they have 2.7 millimeter it's a small drill it can be enough but with tolerances in machining there can be a problem so the easiest way here we have an inclined drill we match property the same inclination it will not cost more than in the machining because you already have an inclined drill it will be the same operation same inclination very easy to machine but here we save some uh, time uh, some uh, we have some safety more in the block. Let's do again the wall thickness check. And we can start. And there is a, a, an issue here uh, between the, uh, the orifice and there is only 3.2 millimeter, which we can address by moving. I could use the same technique actually. I can move by, let's say four mm, let's say 64. Stretch my drill, 63, and uh, again, match properties. Same inclination applied to the same drill. And now I make a connection slightly offset. Let's make it to the center, let's move it. And that's good. So now, wall thickness check will not give me problem for my 4mm. There are uh, other issues, clearance in same net. Usually this is not a problem. Like in this case, it's a virtual distance uh, across these two drills that are highlighted. So uh, in this case, it's a false warning. It says that uh, here there is a distance of 0 0.8. So when you get the clearance list, uh, clearance in same net list, take a look, but usually they are not many problems. Uh, these could be problems. Usually it's a distance between a spot face. Uh, in this case, the spot face is not deep, so it, it's okay, it will work. Sometimes uh, you have uh, a sink the spot face, so you don't want uh, uh, not in uh, too short distance, too short wall thickness uh, uh, between uh, spot faces of the cavities. So let's say that our block is safe for our standard, and we want to make an assembly. So let's go to the assembly environment. And we do the automatic assembly. We started from hydro, so let's start the automatic assembly. And we place our block. And now MD2 is loading the block. It's loading the list of cavities and the list of items that will be assembled here. So we just click assemble, and now we wait. Uh, MD2 will load the files for us. Uh, and we'll assemble in the correct position. We just wait a couple of minutes, maybe less, 30 seconds to finish the assembly. So now that we are here, we can assemble the uh, items on top. We can do the assembly interface. And let's say that on the position number four, we had a uh, ZDR6 and a 4W6. And on the DO3, we had a Rexor for W6. You can also search for W6. That's cool, didn't work. Uh, maybe for W. Okay, the spelling for WE underscore six. Yes, J. And you could assemble also fittings and other items. So update, and this command will update, uh, will add the other components to the assembly. If you need help with the setting assembly constraints, you can look at the webinars that we have made in the past, or you can ask and we'll provide a direct link. I forgot to put the mounting holes, so let's go back to the uh, uh, block. Let's put uh, four mounting holes. Let's say M6, four on the bottom face. Of course, when you do some change, you should run again the wall thickness check and verify. So here, 
I may have some uh, some problems, but now I see that I can move multiple one, two, and move uh, let's say Z so on this direction five and M. We can uh, stretch this drill and make it 84 and so on. You can do any other change in the in the diameter. Uh, if you do any change in the in the block, uh, then the assembly may require update. You could also change face. So uh, let's say that we change face. Well, mm, now it's a bit tricky to. Next time I will change face. The, the assembly will just update, simplify. So let me start making the machining drawing here. I will do the fast machining drawing. So as you see, we started from the diagram. We made the diagram in HydroCAD. We designed the block and verified it. Um, we made the assembly. So now our assembly is uh, is made and we can, uh, okay, let's update the assembly. This command will update the assembly. I don't know what was wrong. And uh, we update the assembly and we can send the assembly to the customer. Now we can make a machine drawing. Before doing that, I, I run a command called machining ID. This command will give to each cavity in the block a unique ID. And now I make my machine drawing. Uh, I select a uh, template and I create my views of the block. That's my block. You can define the scale one by one, the type of projections uh, desired by your type of manifold and uh, you, you can just click OK. Here md tools will put the, all the six views of the manifold and we'll add additional information like direction of uh, Incline the drills. I forgot to move the engraving in the block. You can move the engravings uh, like I did for the other text, but here I 3.1 and 4 I left where they are. We can show the machining ID. So in this in this case, MD tools will put a number or a letter according to the style that you define um, with with letters. E D. So face E, all the cavities start with E face P, and number means identical cavity in the same face. If some text is overlapping, we just take it and move. Uh, so some cosmetic change may be needed in the, in the block. Uh, these uh, uh, really are controlled by the engraving. So you should change the engraving in the, in the block. So that's my, although you can drag it, but that's my problem. I didn't update properly in the, in the block. Uh, when you put this uh, information, we want to make a drill chart, which again is very customizable. Now I have a standard drill chart, which I'll show you and place it uh, in the block. So here we have the drill chart. Uh, it's taking the information from the library and uh, adding also in my case, the mid list and the quantity. So all the intersections of each cavity. I see a, a question about layout drawing with dimension on. Uh, so uh, in terms of layout drawing of the assembly, let me save the assembly. So the question is if uh, MD2 is able to uh, to make, a, uh, let me save. And let's call it a webinar assembly. If you make a new drawing, You are able to create a views of the assembly file, but uh, this will not add uh, dimensions. So dimensions for the assembly file, uh, you will need to add with uh, with standard uh, uh, solvers or inventor commands. This is because uh, really there is not no particular rules, uh, standard rules for uh, layout drawing. So this kind of use you can make also with the standard commands in the CAD application. Simply here you have uh, directly six views and then you can uh, do anything else. Either soldiers or inventor, we don't help much with uh, the, the assembly. So in this case, I can add uh, also a 3D view. 
Uh, what is interesting is that it is possible in the drawing, this is only in, uh, in SOLIDWORKS, uh, for the block, since we color really the feature, and uh, that's why then uh, in SOLIDWORKS uh, MD2 is a bit slower than, uh, than Inventor, we can you display the colors with just one click. So we can show the color in the machine drawing very, very quickly. This is a particular uh, with the SOLIDWORKS because we really apply color to the surface, but that's not doable uh, in, um, in Inventor. Uh, here we can add all the dimensions. So the dimensions can be added in the machine drawing of the block, but not they will not work in the assembly because uh, in the assembly it does not make sense to put all the dimensions. And, um, and at the end, uh, usually, uh, depending on uh, what you want to display, you put only some relevant uh, dimensions for, uh, for each view, for the assembly drawing. 